Hey, Soul Survivors, I have a viewer topic request where we're talking about, I'm starting to begin to wonder if I am the narcissist. They say that they're aware of their behaviors and it gets so overpowering and overwhelming that all they can do is go into a different room by themselves until it passes. So as we go through this abuse, sometimes we do have some symptoms that seem narcissistic. So I'm going to go over different mental illnesses and personality traits that can mimic narcissism. I have a lot of videos on NPD, narcissistic personality disorder. We also have narcissistic traits, everybody. And it's how we deal with some of our traumas, our triggers, but borderline personality can mimic narcissism. So the reason I'm presenting this is uh, I am certified to teach psychology. I'm a life coach, but I am not a licensed therapist. So take that with a grain of salt that, you know, if you really are struggling, you might want to get uh, an official diagnosis, but this can kind of give you some insight on yourself, on your partner, on others. But BPD, borderline personality and NPD can involve unstable and intense relationships. People with BPD can exhibit mood swings, impulsivity, a fear of abandonment, and that can sometimes be mistaken for narcissistic behaviors. So the fact that you're aware of your behaviors uh, might be a clue that it's not necessarily NPD, but when somebody goes through mortification and extreme uh, traumatic event, they might start to recognize that maybe there's something going on with them. Um, most narcissists don't realize that they're the problem, but after a while, there are some that do try to change. So histrionic personality disorder, Amber Heard had this, uh, shares characteristics with NPD, such as seeking attention and being easily influenced by others. But histrionic individuals are often more emotionally expressive and theatrical than those with NPD. So Amber Heard also had borderline personality disorder. Antisocial personality disorder, known as ASPD, can involve, just like NPD, manipulative and exploitive behavior. But people with ASPD typically lack empathy and disregard the rights of others, while narcissists may simply just be self-absorbed without necessarily engaging in criminal behavior. They can do that. That's why it gets so confusing. There's also comorbidities. Uh, somebody with OCPD, which is obsessive compulsive personality disorder, can involve perfectionism, a need for control and re rigidity in thinking, which can be mistaken as narcissistic. But people with OCPD are often preoccupied with order and rules, whereas narcissists are primarily focused on their self-image and need for admiration people with depression. So if you've been a victim of narcissistic abuse or other types of abuse, um, you can have symptoms such as withdrawal, irritability, and a preoccupation with one's own thoughts and feelings, and that can be mistaken. But depression is typically marked by persistent feelings of sadness and worthlessness, which are not central to NPD. So they don't seem um, worthless. It's kind of the opposite. They feel that they're grandiose and uh, show that everybody should be at their beck and call. Substance abuse. That's why if you are trying to get diagnosed with something or to see what's going on, they have to rule out substance substance abuse first, whether it's alcoholism or drugs, because this can lead to behaviors that look like narcissism, such as manipulation, lying, and a disregard for others' feelings. These behaviors can diminish or disappear when the individual is sober. So that's kind of good news. High-functioning autism or Asperger's syndrome, people with uh, autism on the spectrum, they may struggle with social interactions and empathy, which can be misinterpreted as narcissistic traits, but the underlying causes are different. Aut autism spectrum disorders stemming from neurodevelopmental differences rather than personality traits. Temporary stress reactions. When somebody's going through extreme stress or a reaction to a traumatic event, it can temporarily manifest as narcissistic behaviors, such as heightened self-focus and a reduced capacity for empathy. They're just so wrapped up in what they're going on. So these behaviors are typically situational and not indicative of a long-term personality disorder. But DPD, which is dependent personality disorder, characterized by pervasive and excessive need to be taken care of, leading to submissive and clingy 
behavior. So in some cases, people with DPD can appear overly accommodating or eager to please, which can be misconstrued as a desire for attention, similar to narcissistic behavior. You have your social anxiety anxiety disorder, SAD. People with social anxiety disorder often experience extreme fear or anxiety in social situations. And in an effort to conceal their anxiety, they may come across as aloof or disinterested, which might be misinterpreted as indifference or narcissism. BPD, I'm sorry, bipolar. Let's talk about bipolar. Uh, BPD is borderline. But Bipolar. During manic episodes in bipolar disorder, people can exhibit grandiosity, high self-esteem, impulsivity. That's another um, similar trait to what narcissists may have. But these behaviors are episodic and are followed by depressive episodes with a significant shift in mood. Schizoid personality disorder. Schizoid individuals typically have limited interest in forming relationships and may prefer solitary activities. This detached and emotionally distant behavior can sometimes be mistaken for the narcissist self-absorption, although the underlying motivations differ. So PTSD, also CPTSD, complex or just post-traumatic stress disorder, can exhibit hypervigilance, emotional numbing, and difficulty connecting with others. Their avoidance of emotional engagement might be misinterpreted as callousness uh, or narcissistic indifference. So some examples, somebody with histrionic personality disorder, they can constantly seek attention and validation through dramatic, dramatic gestures. Looks like narcissistic behavior, but their motives offer often differ. Histrionic individuals crave attention for emotional fulfillment while a narcissist seeks to maintain their grandiose self-image. Somebody who has a borderline personality disorder, they can have intense and unstable relationships and be uh, may become emotional volatile. Their fear of abandonment can lead to behaviors that might be perce perceived as manipulative or self-centered akin to narcissism. But these behaviors stem from a fear of abandonment and identity disturbances, not a desire for power or control. So someone with a major depressive episode may withdraw from social interactions, appear self-absorbed, struggle to express empathy. These behaviors can be seen as narcissistic indifference when in fact, they're just symptoms of depression. A, uh, AVPD, avoidant personality disorder, characterized by pervasive fear of criticism, rejection, possibly embarrassment, leading to avoidance of social situations. Individuals with AVPD might seem reserved, detached, distant, and it can be misinterpreted as arrogance or narcissism when it's actually just driven by anxiety. Paranoid personality disorder. These people are often distrustful suspicious of others, leading to a guarded and defensive behavior. This constant vigilance might seem a self-centeredness or a focus on personal safety, but it arises from a deep-seated mistrust of others. Depersonalization, derealization disorder, characterized per persistent feelings of being detached from one's own body or surroundings, these people appear self-absorbed because they are preoccupied with their own perceptions, but this is a response to a dissociative experience and not narcissism. You also have GAD, generalized anxiety disorder. These people often have excessive worry and rumination about various aspects of life. Their preoccupation with these worries may come across as self-absorption when in reality it's just un controlled anxiety. Uh, somebody who has a dependent personality disorder, they may excessively seek the advice or approval of others appearing to lack independence. This behavior might be misinterpreted as seeking admiration, just like the narcissist. However, the motivation behind it is driven by a need for reassurance and a fear of abandonment. Uh, somebody who has a paranoid personality disorder may be extremely suspicious of others and always on guard against perceived threats. Their must sorry, I'm tongue tied. Their mistrust can lead to behaviors that resemble narcissistic self protection, but it originates from a deep seated fear of betrayal or harm. When you have somebody who has that depersonalization, derealization disorder, they can appear distant 
preoccupied with their own experiences due to a feeling of detachment from reality. And this is often mistaken as self-absorption, but it's just a coping mechanism for managing a dissociative condition. Somebody who has generalized anxiety disorder, they might continuously express concerns about various aspects of life, which can be construed, construed as excessive self-concern. But their anxiety-driven worries extend beyond themselves and are not indicative of narcissism. So you have attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. They can exhibit impulsive behaviors, difficulty maintaining attention, hyperactivity. Their impulsive actions may sometimes be seen as self-centered, lack of consideration, but it's important to recognize these behaviors are often unintentional and related to the disorder. Narcissistic traits versus NPD. We need to uh, remember that having narcissistic traits or tendencies doesn't necessarily mean a person has NPD, narcissistic personality disorder. Many people exhibit occasional narcissistic behaviors. It's kind of how we survive in this world, such as seeking praise or recognition without meeting the full criteria. You need five out of nine criteria for NPD. So it becomes a disorder when these traits significantly significantly impair one's functioning and well-being. And that's the key uh, to be diagnosed. It has to impair one's uh, functioning and well-being to themselves. So even if they're hurting other people, they won't receive the diagnosis unless it's hurting their own life, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but somebody who has ADHD, they can struggle to listen attentively during conversations. They can interrupt frequently, which is similar to what the narcissist does. These behaviors are seen often as self-centeredness, lack of interest in others, but it's just due to the difficulties with impulse control and also difficulties maintaining focus. So it's a essential to distinguish between somebody who exhibits occasional narcissistic traits, such as seeking attention on social media, and an individual with MPD who consistently displays a pattern of grandiosity, a lack of empathy, persuasive, pervasive need for admiration that significantly impairs your relationships and overall functioning. So uh, it's crucial to approach the assessment of any mental health condition with care, avoid jumping to conclusions uh, based solely on observed behavior, accurate diagnosis and understanding the underlying factors that drive are essential for appropriate treatment and support. We have to understand what is triggering this. Why does somebody have these issues uh, in order to address them appropriately? So I hope that was helpful. Uh, we all have some narcissistic personality traits. It's human nature, but um, a lot of uh, triggers are the things that we need to heal, the things that we need to recognize. I don't want you going hiding. I want you to be able to cope with what you're going through to avoid negative situations that may bring out the worst. We all have these little things in us that can be triggered and coping with them, healing, uh, loving ourselves. The self-love is extremely important. Weeding out the people who don't belong in your life. Let me know if I can help you a little bit more. I have many videos on narcissistic personality disorder, but the fact that you're becoming self-aware uh, may be indicative that um, either, you know, uh, you've realized uh, things about you and it's destroying your life and you want to change it, or maybe it's a misinterpretation of what's going on. Because if you've gone through narcissistic abuse, you develop more narcissistic personality traits and that's trauma-based. Same with the narcissist. There's this trauma base, but they're not willing to work on healing their inner child, or they don't understand the empathy a lot of times to focus on how to get along with others. They're so focused on themselves. So uh, I don't know enough about your situation to help you further than that. Feel free to share some more information and one-on-ones are available. Topic requests are welcome. And I hope that was helpful. There's a lot of pain out there. And when we start focusing on the inner child, things start falling back into place.